No God to worship except Allah. He is one. He has no partner. And the eyes who are. Muhammad is his messenger. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Ash Aru. And La Ilaha. Ilaha. Wa Ashadu. And Abu Baba. Rasulallah. Allah. You will be quitting showbiz? Yes, actually I, I have quit. It's been like eight months since my last um, appearance on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, my life in showbiz, I was very unhappy. I was very unhappy. I was lost, and I always felt like I never belonged. But now that Allah is in my life, Alhamdulillah, illallah, I'm so happy and content with my life. Allah Akbar, I'm really happy because, you know, Allah chooses whom He guides, and Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing for me because I'm being guided by Him, Alhamdulillah. Ashadu Allah Ilaha El Allah Wa Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Rasul Allah May Allah forgive you all your mistakes and this is a beautiful, beautiful day for you. This is the beginning of the rest of your life. I am here for you as your brother. Anything, anytime you need, you come to me, okay? If you come to me or you come to any of your brothers, you're my baby brother, I'll never let you down. I promise you that, okay? You have that oath from me. I'll never let you down. Satan will come after you like a ton of bricks now. He's coming after you. But I'm here, don't you worry, okay? I'm here, your brothers are here. Stick with good company, okay? Allah bless you. would like to be a Muslim and they all stood up 1,250 people took shahada all at the same time Allah we would go to church just a few times a year for Christmas and Easter and the holidays when I was about 11 or 12 years old and I started thinking for myself uh, I asked myself does God exist and this question I felt was pushed on me by a clash between science and religion and when I compared what I saw in the Bible and what I knew of the Trinity and the other Christian beliefs compared to science and evolution and evidence uh, I leaned towards the side of science and I chose not to believe in God. My first exposure to Islam was when my friend in high school became Muslim and he's also my neighbor Michael Dan and when Michael became Muslim he changed a lot. Before Islam, he was doing a lot of things that were messing his life up and he was really going down the wrong path. And when he was only 15 and he changed and he left a lot of the things he was doing, he picked up a lot of good habits. And I asked him, 
what forced you to change, what, you know, what made you change and become like this? And he explained that he's Muslim now. And then he explained to me about Muslims and I, I was surprised that Islam is very close to Christianity and Judaism. And it made a lot of sense to me that there's one God and there's prophets and messengers, but none of the prophets have divinity. Uh, rather, they're just sent by God and they're humans like us. And I didn't really want to become Muslim at that time, but it just made sense to me logically. After a while, I read a book called The Autobiography of Malcolm X. And in that book, I really uh, appreciated the image that Malcolm X presented of Muslims, and I wanted to become Muslim after that. Because I saw in Islam a solution to racism and a lot of other problems in America. But I didn't believe in God. Uh, however, I read a passage where Malcolm X said, if you take one step towards God, he takes two towards you. So I left eating pork, and I left some of the things that are prohibited in Islam with the intention that God guide me. And I learned more and more about Islam and I was surprised that the more I asked questions, the more answers I found and the answers always made sense to me. And I read about the miracles of the Qur'an, scientific miracles of the Qur'an. Uh, and there are many, there are many. I'd like to add that Islam is the most beautiful thing in my life and the source of all goodness. It's a message that every soul finds tranquility with and a sense of purpose, and fulfillment, and true happiness. And I encourage everyone to take a step towards God. And they'll find that God takes two steps towards them. Because this is a light from Allah. And any way you look at the light, it comes out to be true. And so if you ask questions and you prefer to look at it from science, or from your soul, or from people, go whichever way you want, and I'm sure that you will find that this is the message you've always been looking for. My mom was saying, when you die, you will be asked so many questions in your grave. And what will you answer? If you're a, a, a real Muslim, you would feel humiliated when you have like short clothes on. And it got me thinking and every night before I go to sleep is what I'm doing right. I started um, having an interest about Islam and I don't know something I think I had a calling or something and then I decided I don't want to do this anymore I want to live my life according to Islam and according to the Sunnah Prophet I don't know the feeling I don't know it's really I can't explain it and after a while you know, I started gaining more knowledge about Islam. I, I talked to my father. I said, Baba, I want to perform Hajj. Alhamdulillah, the first time I stepped on Medina, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu mosque. I was so emotional and I felt so blessed because, you know, it was a dream come true. And you see the Kaaba, oh my gosh. La ilaha illallah, Allah So. A feeling that I cannot express, but there is this urge that makes you want to cry. And I don't know, and it, I think it's the feeling. Wow, I'm so close to Allah, and I felt so, you know, I'm such a sinful person, and yet Allah invited me to His house. Islam is really a religion of, of peace because people come together helping each other from different countries, different races just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm just so happy to be a Muslim alhamdulillah but I just want to thank my father for giving me the opportunity to perform Hajj and that I love him so much and, and, I'm, and that I'm happy because without my father I wouldn't have been a Muslim. I want to live my life according to the Sunnah of the Prophet According to Islam, I want to live my life the Islamic way. Islam is a way of life. And when you become a Muslim, you start to know what your purpose really is. And your purpose in this world is just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before I came to Islam, my life was really kind of focused on 
drink, drugs, having fun. The whole kind of purpose of life was just to have fun, have a laugh. And it's just a way of kind of making your life bearable until you die. Uh, it tends to kind of be in a kind of heavy metal crowd, hanging around a lot of people with similar interests, which weren't always the best company to keep. My first experience of seeing Muslims was the 9-11 attacks. So f from that media bombardment, I started getting a strong hatred for Muslims. Uh, so much, in fact, uh, I tried to join the army three times with, with the goal of wanting to, to go over there and, and kill as many as these people as, as I could to do my bit for the country and uh, to make it a bit safer for my family. I thought they were kind of the big evil of the world. I started hearing a bit more about Islam. It was the last time I was applying for the army. I came across this radio station. It was at a time when I was listening to conspiracy theory radio and things like this. And this, uh, it was a radio station from the American government called Terror Talk. And it was talking about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It, it, it just didn't sound right to me that people would follow him from all these evil things they were saying about him. So I started to question what Muslims believed at that time. I was on a spiritual search anyway. And one of my friends turned to me and said, before you decide on this paganism thing, have a look around a bit more. So I came across kind of Muslims on the internet. I think one of the first people I saw on the internet was Baba Ali. He broke the stereotype of Muslims for me. And then I eventually picked up the Quran from my college. But as soon as I started reading the book, it, it hit me immediately. And I couldn't stop reading it. It just it, it sank deep into my heart. Uh, the first day I went to the mosque, um, I spent all day there reading and my mum called me in the evening and asked me where had I been all day and I said I was at a mosque. She was like, what? No, 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 you, you can't be at a mosque, you're a Christian. Christians don't go to mosques. And she was very, very shocked and thought I was going down a bad, bad path. That was my mum's original reaction. After a while she started to accept it. She'd done a lot of crying. Uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure why she was crying. I think she felt I was rejecting everything she'd taught me. A lot of people say when they find Islam, it's as if they've come home. And that's just the feeling I get. It's as if me in the past wasn't me at all. I was being controlled by something else. Don't be afraid of what your family think. And at the end of the day, Islam is for you, it's for you. You can just hope the best for your parents will come afterwards. My name is Michael Storms. That's my name before I became Muslim and I'm 27 years old. My name after I became Muslim is Muhammad Islam. My childhood was very, it was very difficult. I came from a very violent background. Crime and, and violence, drugs, things like this. I don't know my father. My father left when I was two um, and it was me and my two sisters with my mother. I thought the world was a very negative place. When I was about eight years old, I would go to a bakery called Paradise Bakery, and I would wash dishes uh, for hours on end, but I was too young to be paid money, so what Norris would do is he would pay me in food, some bread and jam and dates and little sweets and stuff like this. And I would go home and feed my two sisters that because my mother would be off doing some other crime or she'd be in jail or something like this, right? Or I'd be out all night collecting recyclables so I can come home and feed my sisters in the morning. I started my little uh, career when I was 14 and I was never close enough with too many people to, to say that I had friends that I could call on. I never really trusted anybody. And uh, school wasn't for me. I never finished school. I didn't have time for it. I would rob, uh, steal a lot of things, and uh, assault people. I was never alone, but I felt lonely. I lost all concern for people's feelings and I didn't care at the time at all. I was in my cell, it was towards the end of my sentence, I was just about to get out. I wanted to do something else, I didn't want to continue being 
bad, you could say. And so the way that I started to ask questions when I was by myself was along the lines of, uh, I don't know if there's a God or if you exist or I could be talking to myself for all I know. I don't know why I'm alive, things like this. But if there's a, if there's a reason why I'm alive, can you show me why I'm alive? And, and then I would just talk and say, for example, I stressed the point that I needed it to be shown to me because I didn't trust anybody let alone somebody telling me about God, right? I had a brother named Ahmed talk to me about Islam initially, but again, he told me so I didn't believe him. And he would mention things like uh, heaven and hell, and I didn't believe what he was saying until I had a dream of both the places. And even then I was being resistant. I was like, maybe that was a fluke and this and that, right? I had a dream of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. <coughs> So things happened to me when I was awake and when I was asleep, and a lot of it happened to me in a very small amount of time. As soon as Ahmed started talking to me about Islam, I didn't believe him. Allah already knew that I wouldn't believe him. And then I recalled what I asked for when I was in jail, the things that happened to me so I can't deny it, right? It was very, very difficult doing what somebody else wanted you to do, even God. You know, I struggle with it even today. It was very, very, very difficult. And I went to the masjid and I started, and I sat down, and uh, I was on my knees and uh, just sitting back like people do when they're finished for the prayer. And I just started crying. I was crying and crying and crying and crying and crying and drooling. I couldn't control myself, right? It was like 20 years of, uh, of betrayal and stress, and violence and anger and all these things uh, built up and then it's like Allah allowed me to just get rid of it all and I cried for a very, 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 very long time, right? And I, got, I mean, I couldn't move, right? I was just crying. I am most pleased that I pray. Yeah, it's important, very, very important. A feeling of safety from Allah and uh, from His punishment, you could say. That's what I get out of it, like a calmness and a... I was raised a Baptist. What Jesus taught was good. What Moses taught was right. What Isaiah, Lot, Noah, God has always sent prophets to different people at different times with messages for those people. All of them are right. So I choose to follow the Islamic path because I've never saw so much love. I never saw so many people hugging each other, kissing each other, praying five times a day, the women in the long garments, the way they would eat. I chose the Islamic path because it connected me. As a Christian in America, I couldn't go to the white churches. I sat down with Colonel Gaddafi, had dinner in this palace, stayed overnight because of a Muslim. Kings and people of these nations have welcomed me as a brother. The Islamic religion connected me with Pakistan, Morocco, Syria, with Saudi Arabia. As a Christian, I never could sit with Christian leaders. I'm not condemning no other religion, but for me, accepting the Islamic religion it was better for me. So I chose the Islamic religion. That's why I chose it. For the first 35 years of my life, I was a disbeliever. I knew there is no God. I didn't see any need for God. And I didn't believe in God. Ever since I was small, I was interested in science. 25 years ago, I came to the conclusion that the universe is so perfectly made and everything so perfectly matches together that there must be God. I went from certainty there is no God to certainty there must be God and only one God. But I was not looking for a religion. I thought all religions are wrong. But I didn't want to stay ignorant about religions. So I said, okay, I, I read Bible. And I saw in the Bible there are places which you know come from God. You feel it in your heart. But you see there are places which come from man. Because this page says something that is opposite to the thing that was said a few pages ago. 
So I knew that Bible was written by man many years after the prophets. And I bought the Quran, English translation of the Quran. And when I started reading it, I started reading it with the same idea that just like Bible, it was written by man. Only in this case, we know the name of the man, Muhammad. And then when I was maybe about one third in Quran, I remember telling my wife, you know, this Muhammad, he must have been a very smart, very intelligent man because this book is very clear, very logical, very easy to follow and there are no contradictions. But then as I read later, I suddenly saw a scientific fact which I knew was only discovered in the 20th century. So immediately I saw that Muhammad is not the author of the Quran. Well, Muhammad is a messenger sent by God to give the Quran to mankind. And people asked me, well, how did you react? And I said, I had no choice. But the greatest blessing was that God showed me his guidance. And when I pray, I make dua, God, please, let me die as a believer. Let me never disbelieve again. God says in the Quran, we demonstrate our miracles to those who attain certainty. You know, this is the truth because this book is from God and he doesn't make any mistakes.